What's going on? Welcome back to another edition of Conversations with Kenny. It's your boy once again. This is the last episode of the year. You can see the Christmas tree in the background. You see all the Christmas decorations. 2022 is in the books and what a year it's been uh, for us here at, well, with Conversations with Kenny and powered by uh, the Knuckleheads Network. You've been seeing us every single Monday for three and a half hours talking crap you see us on thursdays talking shit all the time but then we're starting to bring you more of the conversations with kenny episodes uh my my next guest is joining me this week it's finally i finally get to sit the man down this guy is so busy all right every single time i've hit this guy up i've said hey all right, can, can you do it this week? He's like, man, you know, I got to go. I have a I have a show I got to do. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, but I think the side, you know, I'm going to ask him when he gets in here. I think it's something with me because every time Toe comes around, unless he's busy, unless he's not busy on a Thursday, you know what I mean? Because then I got to, you know, maybe get a hold of him on a Thursday night when I know he's there. You know what I mean? I'll, t- I'll tell Toe and we do the whole switcheroo thing. But uh, but we got him in this time. He's the final guest of the year. Uh, if, you ha- if you don't know this guy, you're going to get to know his story. And you trust me, once you hear his story, you're going to become a fan. Uh, I've never met a guy who loves the business more than this guy right here. And uh, his name is Matt Awesome. I'm bringing him in right now. Mr. Matt yeah. Awesome, what is going on? <laughs> What's good, baby? I, Finally get you on here. I know you heard the intro when I was saying, yes. I was like, man, he's taking forever to, to, to jump on. I'm a busy man. And, you know, <laughs> I have to find time. And yes, sometimes Thursday nights I'm available. And, you know, Toe hit me up. Hey, my guest didn't make it. Can you pop in? And I'll pop yeah. in for maybe like a few moments and then leave because, mm-hmm. you know, family stuff. Like last time I jumped on, I had already said earlier in the day, hey, mm. let's watch a family movie. When I get home from work, we right. watched the movie and everybody went to their rooms and I'm like, let me get on this real quick. And I got off for a little bit. But right. today, off day, was making some coquito for a few people and I got to head to my shoot job in a little uh-huh. while to basically do a gift exchange. But okay, okay. I have to find time for my boy Kenny over here. About time, man. About about time. I was just, I was. Listen, man. It was either I was gonna go to your shoe job with a microphone and just stand there, or I was just gonna talk to whoever it is that was booking you for the next show and just be like, listen, I just need a, I need a quick ten with this guy. Put him in the corner. Don't tell him not to go nowhere because you know, I mean, we got, we got, we got to get this done. But man, I'm, I'm glad I have you on. Um, like I was telling you know, like I said in the top of the show, I've, I've never met a person that's so. Um, they're so passionate about this business. Every Thank single time that I've talked to you, every single time that I have uh, heard you on, you know, multiple shows, uh, the the praise that you give people that you've been in the ring with, whether it's you you've worked across from them, you've trained with them, they've trained you. Um, it's just like it's so genuine. You know what I mean? And you, you don't, I don't really see that a lot, you know, at, at, at any business really. Like you get a couple of, you get those, those rare unicorns where they're like, Hey, I'm really proud of this person. And I'm just sitting into myself, like, you know what? You should be in that position because I've seen, I've seen your work and I got to see your work live. And every single time I say the same thing, I was like, he lives up to the name Matt Awesome. You know what I mean? It's it's not just a gimmick. It's it's something that uh, he's 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 actually is awesome. He's like you you I don't I, unless you unless you you've been a piece of shit that we don't we don't know about. But anytime like I, I, I've, so, I've only so, seen so. positive things. I've only seen positive things about you, man. But Thank let you. let me ask you like where did the we'll we'll get into your your in ring in a minute. But where did you like where did this love for wrestling come from? When uh, Matt was a little awesome, um, I was like, literally, my stepfather sat me in front of the TV as a kid, and we'd watch Saturday Morning Superstars. <laughs> we'd watch Glow. Mm-hmm. And I just was like, so, I was so into it. I, I loved it so much. And then I have a cousin in Connecticut. Um, he just recently moved um, by the name of Chris. And mm. we used to run around, literally, He's going to kill me for this. But we used to run around in our little WWF underwear. And we all had that. I had, I know on mine, I had, 
I had a pair of Ultimate Warriors. I had a pair of Hogan's, and I had a pair of Macho Man's. Mm-hmm. We had we basically had the same pair of underwears all the time, which was weird. And we'd run around with our action figures and fight with them and run around. Like we'll go to a, a family friend's house. He had a pool, and we used to run around the pool with them and mm-hmm. throw them in the pool. And make everybody go and get them for us, and. It just like started to grow from there, you know. I, I fell in love with the WWF before they were the E. Um, got into watching Triple A wrestling, which was crazy. I started watching like Luchadors, and I was like, "Oh, they do this in Mexico." Mm-hmm. And then I got a hold of a VHS of All Japan, and I was like, "They do this in Japan, but they do it differently." And my cousin Chris again would always lend me tapes and dvds like he'll come every other weekend to the bronx to go stay in his grandmother's house and be like matt i'm gonna come over i'm like all right cool and i'm like my is it okay if chris comes over she's like okay it's fine he'll come over and we'll be in the room the whole day watching ring of honor backyard wrestling the list goes on and Mm -hmm. also my other cousin anthony he um he got me into watching wrestling too with him like playing the games on Sega, Super Nintendo, and then me and my best friend, which has been best friends for like over twenty something years. Um, he was at the the We Are Wrestling show. Okay. Also. Um, he he and I, we my uncle used to work as a, my uncle owns a company that he does security, mm-hmm. and it's high class security. Like he'll send people to to walk with the celebrities or whoever. Oh, nice. Them. He ended up watching Vince McMahon one day like, mm. protecting him. and he was like referred to Vince McMahon by someone a lot of us in America don't like um, because he worked with him in the past. Right. And he was like, hey, you know, this guy over here, he, he can do great detail for you. And my uncle was wouldn't stop talking about his favorite nephew the whole time. <laughs> And mind you, it's Triple H, China, and Vince. He's talking to about me. And Vince was like, hey, bring him down to the headquarters. So like at the age of 12, 13, my ass was walking through the freaking WWE headquarters, Connecticut, saying, I'm going to be a wrestler one day. I'm going to be here. Me and my best friend, we're going to be tag team champions. And then we go (laughs) to this. And guess who's in that office? Linda McMahon. No, oh, my God. Titles, And I told her, hey. I want to be a wrestler. She was like, when you're 18, come knock on our door. Never took her up on that offer. Should have. Right. Wouldn't be here sitting with you right now. Possibly I would be. But, you know, um, but, you know, there's, I'm not much of a person of religion. Mm-hmm. I do believe there's a higher power. Mm-hmm. And God has things in, in place for us. And certain moments in life will happen. And it may not happen when we want it to. It will happen later. And... Lo and behold, here I go. Here I am right here. Six years strong in the business. Now, now, now let, me ask, let me ask you this, because I've said this, you know, I, I always pose this question to a lot of people. Um, when you decided to uh, join this this crazy business and you know you wanted to, obviously you, you took that next step into being, you know, uh, a professional, you know, professional wrestler. What, what did your family think about this? Well, um may she rest in peace my mom uh my father's mother is the person who raised me my whole life since i was Mm -hmm. born my father and my biological mother couldn't basically take on the full responsibility of raising me Mm -hmm. so my father's mother was like give me custody and literally since i was born she raised me she raised Mm -hmm. me for 29 years of my life um the year i started training was the year she passed away and i met I'm going to start dropping names now, so get ready. Now do your thing. I met Steve Pena at a gym one time working out. Um, mm. We got into a conversation about a wrestling t-shirt I was wearing while I was working out. Mm. And he was like, hey, I know that guy. And I'm like, oh, which one? There's two of them. He was like, oh, I know Big Cass. I'm like, oh, that's cool. He was like, yeah, he used to train in Johnny's. I'm like, oh, that's cool. He was like, yeah, I'm a wrestler. Right there, I'm like, oh, we're friends now. What's up? So we're talking about <laughs> it. He said, hey, I got a show coming up in about a week or so, you should come out. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what day? He's like, Saturday. I'm like, ah, I worked that day. Let me switch schedules with somebody. I'm going to go. Switch schedules with someone. Ended up getting out earlier. Shot to Brooklyn. Go to I go to Gleason's gym to go watch Steve and your wrestle. On that card, I also saw Masha Slamovich wrestle. 
I saw, you know, a few different guys that wrestle now still to this day. And I went mainly because, yo, that's my boy from the gym. I'm going to watch him. Right. And after that, he was like, yo, what did you think? I'm like, yo, it was cool. You know, I want to I want to try this one day. He was like, when you want to. I'm like, I'm not so ready. And this was 2015. Ending of 2015. Mm-hmm. I finally work up the courage because I cut weight because I was weighing a little bit too much. I cut some weight. And he was like, I'm like, yo, bro, I'm ready. He was like, all right, let's go. Meet me at uh, Darrell's Extreme Fitness in the Bronx um, mm-hmm. on this day. I'm like, all right, cool. So I show up. Before that, I have a conversation with my mom. I'm like, listen, ma, I really want to do this. Uh, you know how much I love it. Um, as a kid, you know, I used to always wrestle in the hallway upstairs and on Lewis's floor. Used to get hurt all the time. Literally got, <laughs> I slipped out of my friend's hands and he's trying to give me a power bomb. And I landed head first. And you know how project floors are. They made a contract. Yep, this is it hard. Head first into the ground. Knocked out for like 30 seconds to a minute. Oof. My friend fucking killed me. All I remember was going up. Don't remember nothing after that. I remember waking up, sitting on the couch, like, all out. Like, what the hell? My head hurt. He cried. He thought I died for a minute. So, <laughs> um, he already and, knew he was going to jail. He was like, no, please. Yeah, exactly. So then, like, I go and I tell him, I'm like, Ma, I want to do this. And I, I just want your blessing. And she was like, I'll never tell you to not do something that's going to make you happy. Right. You have my support under a few rules. I'm like, okay, what's up? Mind you, 29 years old. I had moved back into the house to take care of her because she was getting mm-hmm. she was a little sick. She was getting, um, she had a heart condition. So okay. I was taking care of her. I was doing literally going food shopping. I was buying food for us all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, literally, I would get out of work and I work in the city on the west side and I would travel to the east side to catch mm-hmm. the sixth street all the way up to Sabrosura to buy food sometimes to come all the way back to the South Bronx to go to, to go to eat my mom. Like I used to do those trips for her whenever she wanted to, whenever she wanted it, because you know what? Right. Give or take, didn't know how long I had with her with the heart condition, right. even though the doctor said it was fine. She just always took it as the worst. And she was like, she just told me circumstances are if you get hurt, don't call me crying and complaining and bitching. Man, the fuck up with that. And if you're in the hospital, I'm going to do the motherly thing and go see you. I'm not going to be that, that hard of a person. We'll go see you. But whatever you broke or whatever you hurt, I'm going to hit it. <laughs> teach you more of a lesson. Oh, my Tip God. I love her already. So I'm like, okay. And she was like, and when you make it, you kidnap the rock and bring them home to me. Damn, like, sounds like my mom. <laughs> like, you got it, and I got you a house and a car. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, big money, huh? I'm like, got you. House and a car. And she was like, okay. So I went that day. Pena kicked my ass. <laughs> my first day, Pena kicked my ass. She was like, all right, we're going to learn how to roll. Funny thing is, nobody knows, but people will know now, even unless they watch other podcasts in the past. Mm. I used to do gymnastics in high school. I was a gymnast. Believe it or really? not, really a gymnast. Mm. I have video and pictures to prove it. Um, not only let that, me ask you, let me let me ask you something because I I know you and Toe went to the same school. Mm-hmm. Was he a gymnast too? This is why he's short. Listen, I can either say yes or no. And we we're gonna take that as a no. We're gonna take that, that as a yes. To go into a bo- to forward roll. He can roll around the whole gym in one thing because he's so small. I, I knew it. Back. I knew it. He could roll and he could pop a horse. He could pop a horse. Oh, my like God. So movie, um, uh-huh. I don't know a lot of people don't know about this movie, The Big Hit, with Mark Wahlberg years ago. Yes. In uh-huh. At the beginning of the movie, the horse that the guy's doing, the, the pop a horse. Uh-huh. That was Toe. He was the stunt double for that. That was him. <laughs> that was him. He could go ham on the, on the, on the horse. But, oh yeah, so God. I start rolling. Uh-huh. And Pena's like, I can do a forward roll. I'm like, okay. Back on my feet. He was like, do a back roll. Okay. Quarter roll, dive roll. I'm like, he was like, whoa, 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 wait a second. You ever trained before? I'm like, no, I used to be a gymnast. He was like, I'm like, bro, I have pictures, prove it. Look, and I showed them me and fucking gymnastics tights. Look, I used to be a gymnast and Alfred E. Smith. 
<laughs> Shout out to Alfred Smith Vocational High School. I did four years there. Completely, I got out alive in four years. So right, listen, man, that was that was a tough school, bro. People were in that school for five years, not four years. I did four uh, years. Oh, did four I went, years. I went. I went to Grace Dodge High School by uh by the Bronx Zoo. I know that. I know that high school. Hey, trust me, it was nothing but females. So the only reason That's why I went there part for you. <laughs> For us, it was a lot of males, but a lot, but some females too. Right. Some of the females were into the boy sports, like our old homegirl Maribel. She was yeah. part of the wrestling team. She would re- she can wrestle anybody under the sun. Like Oof. we put her, you put her in the ring with Toe, Toe done. <laughs> toe done. Like so, like Tanya was like, oh okay, um, you're gonna take a bump now. I'm like, okay. How do I do that? I don't know how to do that. He was like, ah, something you don't know. Cool. So he showed me. He was like, I did it the first time. He was like, tuck your chin because you keep hitting your head. So I'm like, okay. Boom. He was like, cool. Slap out. Boom. Okay, cool. Give me six. I'm like, what? Mm. He was like, give me six back bumps. Hold the rope. One. Got up. Two. Three. Give me a second. Rolled out the ring, ran to the bathroom, puked my mind out. Got back up, went back into the ring. He was like, oh, I thought you were going to bitch out. I'm like, nope. Two, four, five, six. He was like, all right, no more for today. Literally, no more for today. Come back tomorrow. We'll run the ropes. The next day, I had to do it all over again. Roll, bump. Learn how to hit the ropes. And then he had me going for a minute hitting the ropes so I could get my uh-huh. work. Then every week from that point on, I started going to Daro's Extreme Fitness in 2016, springtime to summertime 2016. And I just started, you know, training and learning. Mm-hmm. I learned from a lot of people that are in the business still. Um, around that time, had a uh, Jay Vera, the complete one. He helped me out a lot. Mantequilla. That's why our fight in Invictus was so like to me. It was, it was something. And in the We Are Wrestling Rumble, it was something for me and him to be able to touch each other in these matches and wrestle. It meant a lot to me, because believe it or not, he taught me a lot in the ring. He was the one teaching me like selling, and you know, you should sell whenever you get hit. You don't overdo it. Do it to the right extent, depending on the point. The point of the match. Mm-hmm. Hitting the ropes, learning combinations. Um, um, Evander James, another person who taught me a lot. He taught me in the very beginning. He helped me a lot with my chain work. Uh, Azrael is another one. Uh, it's, it's the list goes on. Santana. That's why I'm rocking this born nasty tea hat. He's another one that I've been in the ring with, train like training wise, and he's put me through the ringer and. I, could, I always remember the first time I met him, we were sitting down talking and he asked me, why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. Why, like, he could tell I have a passion for it, but why? What's my what's my main goal? What's my focus in it? Because he wanted to make sure I'm not trying to make it a joke. I'm like, no, right. I'm like, this is something I love and something I want to do. And when he started doing his, his training camp, again, my shoot job, got in the way of me training on the days he had the camp. And he had asked me and my former tag team partner at Johnny Santos, hey, you know, I want you, would you guys do a training camp if I did one? And he did like pre-training camps before, and I did all Mm -hmm. the pre-training camps. And I kept up with it. Like the day, he did like three or four weeks straight of trying to rally a few people together. And then he put it out, hey, I'm doing a training camp in a month. Right. Join this, how much it's going to be. Come learn from me. I'll teach you guys TV work, all of this. I didn't get a chance to do the main training camp, but I did the pre one. And he saw something in me because for this man to get to contact me one night through Johnny's um, my, uh, messenger, calling me a huele bicho, Thing for me to get my that I the first time he ever spoke to me, I told him I want to be I want to be good in this business. I want to be able to do this, this, and that. He was like, "Didn't you always tell me you wanted to get nasty? Didn't you want to be nasty in the ring? But you're not coming to my training. What's up?" 
So one day, like I'm there, mind you, the my girl now, she heard this message. And she looked at me and she goes, He's right. I'm like, what? She was like, You're being a wet bicho. I'm like, well, thank you. And she's like, You gotta go and train. <laughs> now you're right. Training day. I'm like, next week, Tuesday. And she's like, guess where you're gonna be? I'm like, when are we gonna go to the movies? She was like, Nope. You're going to be at Darrell's Extreme Fitness training with him. And I was like, okay. And that same day, I'm walking to I'm walking to the bank first to get money to go give it to him so I can go and train. She texts me. I just sent you twenty dollars. Go train. I'm like, I had the money already. She's like, go train. Go get some water. No, I took the twenty and I used that one because I had to pay ten at the door to come into the gym. Then him uh -huh. twenty. So I paid ten at the door. Mm. And it out he showed up a little bit later so i started training with the guys right when when i saw him shook his hand he was like give me the money after i'm like all right cool did the training he has this drill that you get blown up after number two man you literally one corner you roll mm -hmm. back roll quarter roll quarter roll back dive roll up and over onto the outside of the ring, back in, up and over again to the outside on the other side, back in, forward roll, up and over, up and over out, up and over back in, up and over back out again, back and forward. I kid you not, at number four, I was hand on my knees, breathing. And he was like, come on, Matt, fight through it. This is nothing. Hmm. He starts, this is nothing. This is nothing. Because around that time, my um, my older sister was going through breast cancer. She was going right. through, you know, she was getting radiation. She was doing the chemo. And it was painful for her. She was weak. And he was like, Matt, not to put your business out there, but how much pain do you think your sister's in all the time? If you're gonna fight something, you're gonna fight pain, fight the pain for her. She's a survivor. She survived. Mm -hmm. She's a warrior. She's stronger than you right now. Do it. Everything he said, I ate it up. Right. Finished. Yeah, nice. six. But it's a pair. So this right. going on one side to the other side, that was one. So literally, I did that. Rode there, and he was like, "Oh, grab the trash can." And ain't Matt ain't about to be awesome right now. He about to throw up. <laughs> and they put the trash can right next to the ring, and I'm like, "Nope." Still did it. And and kept on going. By the ring. I kid you not. The person who put it by the ring was Shotgun Shane Adams. Oof. And guess what happened after I was done? Guess who had to go? Shotgun. At number three. He was outside the ring puking. And he was in the camp since day one. Damn. And I went in, didn't throw up. Right after that, we did another drill. After that, we went over matches. So he was like, since the tag team is here and another tag team is here, we're going to have ourselves a little tag team match. So it's going to be Awesome and Santos, because I don't like your other ring name. So Awesome and Santos. Versus the Graysons. I wrestled the Graysons in a training match. Mm. Who are killing in a wrestling open. Who are who are one of right. the best tag teams. And I'm not saying that because I'm cool with both of the guys. But they're one of the best tag teams out there. They're really good. Wrestled them in a training match. Had a ball. He critiqued it. We went on. I used that feedback that he gave me, and I went on to do, doing other things. Every single time I get feedback from somebody, I try to take it in as much as possible. As long as it's not something that's going to lead me down the wrong path, mm -hmm. work on it. I fix it. Every single time. Bro, your chops. Bring that up a little bit. Okay. Did it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a passion. 
And at the end of the day, when you have a passion for something, you're going to always put 110%. Mm-hmm. You're, gonna all, you're all into it. If you're not passionate about something and you're just wasting your time at it, you have to keep in mind and what you have to remember is that the ones that came before you that left all their blood, sweat, and tears doing it, right. time that they put into it, you're just wasting yours. And just step aside if it's not for you. But know that you did put a certain amount into it. You're not a failure. It's just something that you didn't really put your all into. Mm-hmm. That's something that I've learned. Okay. And I've had people say, oh, why do you do the wrestling for? I'm like, why do I do the wrestling? No, why do I wrestle? I right. wrestle because I love it. It's my escape from reality. Like when my mom passed away, mm-hmm. I was going to quit. I was going to stop. But when I found, when I saw that wrestling was my escape, wrestling kept me out of the dark place I was in when I lost her. I wasn't going to let that go ever. So I pushed myself even more after she passed. I told the guys, don't go easy on me. Like, don't treat me like, oh, you know, his mom just passed. Let's be nice. No. Right. If I fucked up, let me know. If I, you know, if I'm doing something wrong, help me. Hey, Matt, instead of backpedaling to the ropes, turn, look at the ropes, and then turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, I got it. So I take wrestling as something, as an escape, as many do. Like, probably you do it too. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All of us found something in wrestling that would allow us to be out of our reality for a little while and be in another type of, you know, reality for a little bit to let all of our worries, all of our problems, all of our pains, leave them at the door Mm -hmm. and enjoy something for two hours, an hour, three hours, or sometimes like AW 20 hours. But we, we're, we're basically focused on something that's not our reality for a little bit. So let me ask you this, because anybody who knows your character, wh- right, where did the chancleta come from? The chancla is definitely... Okay, so long story short, I've seen it used before in wrestling. I'm going to straight up put it out there. Mm-hmm. It wasn't my main idea to bring a chancla into wrestling. Ortiz used it before, so this Santana... So did Diamante, so did Mercedes Martinez. So I asked first, mm-hmm. hey, is it cool if I use the chunk line? And I was given the permission. I was like, they were like, yeah, go ahead. We don't foresee ourselves using it anywhere else. Have fun with it, bro. Make it your own. Right. Like, don't just use it because we used it. Make it your own. So then I thought back of being a child and being a kid. And being chased around the house with a chunk lap for a little bit, and getting a good whacking on my butt with it. And I also remembered my stepfather sometimes, you know, going like this and catching the top of my head when I was acting up. But I'm like, I was never abused as a kid. Let's just put it out there. Never abused. I was a good just kid. A, we, we, we came, we, we, we come from a, a Spanish and African American family. This is this is exactly. typical stuff that happens to us growing up. Yeah, I think I think, I think that's nothing. I think kids nowadays that's what they're missing, and maybe they wouldn't be acting up the way they do now. You know what I mean? Thank you. Like it's it's not abuse in our eyes. Right. Abuse is put up them hands. We're gonna throw yeah, hands yeah, right that's, now. That's, that's abuse. Or you're like, just running up to your kid and just what. That's you, you just knock them upside the head for no apparent That's reason. That's abuse. A belt, maybe a broomstick. Yeah, hey, we've all been hit. I've got hit with all three. Maybe a, you know, a satin. Who knows? Yeah. Whatever's the closest thing. Like a, a, a bottle of milk. Like, come on. Like, it, it's whatever's closest. Like, I think <laughs> our parents were the first to have a death match wrestler sometimes, but I'm telling you. I digress on that one. But that, the chocolate is an ode to. Of course, stereotype. They people say it's a stereotype. It's not really. It's an ode to my heritage. It's an ode to being Latino, because mm-hmm. I've been approached by many Latinos after matches that I've used the chancla. Um, 
African Americans, Asian, believe it or not, Asian, never white. But they're yeah. like, yo, I just got PTSD, my man. Like, yo, my mom used to grab the chancleta and just she used to literally throw it in the air, John Woo, and then grab it and hit me with it. I'm like, they were the original chan yep. chancletas and chancletazos. They they invented that. We our ancestors are probably using that on the Spaniards when they came in. The Tainos probably used their slippers against them. And you know we won those that first fight, but at the same time we we got their disease. It's mm -hmm. they came back a year later and demolished us. But you know, I have a feeling our ancestors they use chanclas too, and it's in our blood to basically. Of course. Use it. We also learn defense against it sometimes, and it's in our blood. So like I, I love using it in a match, and somebody coming up to me being like, "Yo, I don't know if I should love the chancla or hate it." I'm a fan. Like you brought me back to like when I was a kid. <laughs> like I should start using that on my kids. I'm like, whoa, yeah. like you got it from a wrestling show now. Don't blame Matt Austin. <laughs> but um don't scream out your when you hit them either. Like just keep it to yourself, create your own war cry. But you know, it, it's the chunk has an ode to, to my mom, to my grand, right. my grandmother, my great great grandmother, right? You know, everybody's abuela basically. Exactly. Everybody, everybody's abuelo. Basically, it's it's for everyone. The chancla is basically a tribute and a dedication not only to my mom, but everybody's mm -hmm. mom, everybody's parents. Basically, that's, that's what I, I say. Like we... With the with by a, by a uh, thousand abuelas uh -huh. from Spanish Harlem and Puerto Rico. I have one being imported from Puerto Rico now that was blessed mm -hmm. by all the the whole island. So. Um, that one's gonna be more powerful. I can't, I can't wait to see that. But we're we're uh, we're we're nearing the end of the uh, the interview because I, I know you have some some things that you have to uh, you have to do. So we definitely got to get a part two. Uh, before I, before I let you go, um, what is at least one goal for twenty twenty three? Okay, one goal for twenty twenty three. Yeah, big or small doesn't it doesn't matter. But well, one of them is already happening. And um, right now on this podcast, I know he's going to watch this because I'm going to send him the link right away as soon as it's up. Um, shout out to Joe Kim Morales. Um, shout out to Joe. That, I, I, he's a good guy, man. That man basically, he, he's, he has a great big heart. And if it wasn't for him, I probably would not – be the way I am right now. And that's mm -hmm. because we took a drive out back in 2021. Wait, 2021, 2022. Wait, 2022. 2021. I was right. We drove out to Pittsburgh. It's a six hour drive there, six hour drive back. Mm -hmm. I got booked for MV Young's Polyam Coat Party 3 in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, um, OK was going out there to gift God. So he was like, Yo, Matt. Let's go together. Come with us in the car. I'm like, cool. I'm down. <laughs> Daisy, the dog. So <laughs> somebody's by calling an apartment then. So we get in the car. We go. And um, we're talking. Me, him, Johnny Santos, and Hoke. And this man has a passion for the business just like I do. And he was like, yo, you need a finisher. I'm like, I know I do. So Johnny's like, yo, I got to be called the Coquito Cutter. Like, you're right. Mind you, I made mad Coquito. I'm taking it on a trip and me to sell it at the show over there. Mm -hmm. And then Joe's like, I got it for you. Joe gave me my finishing move. After that, Joe has basically been that extra eyes on what mm -hmm. I'm doing. Giving me feedback. And this year, I was asked by somebody, a part of um, the, the team, to wrestle for a job or slam. But it wasn't brought by him first. Mm -hmm. He had other stuff for me, other ideas for me. So he hit me up personally. He told me, look, listen, I need to see you work. I need to see you do more. Yes, you're doing good. You're doing great work. But I need mm -hmm. to see more. That was like about a month, two months before Chopper Slam this year. 
I'm like, okay. I didn't take it as he didn't want me on his show or I wasn't good enough for his show. Right. I took it as let me get let me turn Matt Awesome up a notch. Okay. Let me prove my wealth, my wealth, my place. So after that conversation I had with him, I'm like, okay. And mind you, every single time me and Joe have ever interacted, ever spoke, ever since I met the guy before the pandemic, I met him way before the pandemic. He was always gave me a hug, treated me like a brother, treated me like family, always said, love you, bro, all the time. And it was genuine. This is a genuine man I'm talking about. I proved my worth. He saw my matches. He's like, all right, you're getting really good now. Now you're getting better. The day of Jabba Slam, I didn't get a chance to go because I was wrestling in Connecticut that day. Mm. I where I gained my first win at Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Shout out to Blood, Sweat, and Tears. That's my second home. Um, they took care of me um, towards the end of the pandemic, all of 2021 and this year. Um, I'm back with them this coming year, 2023. Okay. Um, shout out to Lucas Chase. Lucas Chase is the um, champion there. But back to what I was saying. So Joe hits me up and says, I want you to work my student show in September. I'm like, cool. I'm with it. Let's go. He put me in a gauntlet match, like a, a, a battle royal style match. And I was literally the anchor of that match. I, la I landed to the very end of this rumble with Jordy Lee. And unfortunately, Jordy Lee got me, el eliminated me from their rumble. She goes on to win it until Abraham Khan comes out, does whatever the hell he did. I didn't know what was happening. Mm -hmm. I already went back. Joe grabs me, gives me the biggest hug in the world, and goes, bro, thank you. You did your shit today. Thank you so much. Three days later, yo, you're available um, October 30th. I'm having a Halloween wrestling show. I need you to be a part of it. My kids seeing you there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I need you to be in this gauntlet match. I need you to be that. You know, I need you to bring Matt Awesome to the gauntlet. I'm like, is it costume? He's like, yeah. I'm like, I'm going to go dressed as Kevin Owens. He was like, if I can get him, I'm like, nope, come and dress as Kevin Owens. Let's go. <laughs> shows. What I did was I went to the school the Wednesday before the first one I worked, worked for Fallout. For Fallout. Uh -huh. it's Fallout. It's not Battle Club, it's Fallout. Went, worked with a few other guys from the, from the Rumble. Mm -hmm. They were asking me questions about their spot, what they should do. I was giving them ideas and how they should set it up. Um, I literally helped guide besides them talking to their coaches and everything. And, you know, right. Mike there, you know, Santi is a great coach there. So it's Pena, Masha. Bef like, even though they passed a lot of it through them, they asked me first before their training day with them. So I told them, this is what you guys should do. You guys should do something like this, like JPM. I told them, right. you grab Teddy, grab him, turn to the camera, show your strength, then hit him with the world's strongest slam. That's it. Show your power, like duck, duck, catch, spin them, catch them, mm -hmm. turn, drop. So he practiced it with Teddy real quick once. Yo, I got it. Cool. He passed it through Santi and them. They were like, that actually works. Use it. They had a show. He used it. Um, a lot of the students came to me the day of the show that they didn't go to the training that day. And was like, yo, Matt, can I run a spot with you? I'm like, yeah, sure. So after I was in the Rumble, of course, they want to run a spot with me. I'm, I'm willing to take whatever it is you're going to give. Right. I want to make you look really good. Like, I don't care if I'm taking the slam. I don't care if I'm taking the bump. I'm going to make it look like you just killed me. Let's have fun with this. <laughs> so then for the Halloween show, I was working with the gentleman I actually did the pop-up powerbomb to. Did the pop-up pop, pop, ah, powerbomb once ever in my career. Once ever. Again, I am a Kevin Owens fan, fan since Kevin Steen. I've been a fan. Right. Of the beard. Um, I've always been compared to him because of the beard. I wear a cut-off sleeve. I kind of look like the man. Okay. All right. I'm not him, guys. I am Matt Awesome. Okay. I am Matt. Um, don't don't confuse me with him, please, anymore. Stop that. <laughs> and um, basically, he um. He was like, yeah, do it. 
be Kevin Owens. Saw Kevin Owens in a match. Oh. oh, it looks like we lost Matt for one second. We we seen the little the little glitching there here and there. I don't I don't know what happened, but uh, we'll we'll get him back on. But for them for the most part, uh, man, listen, Matt Awesome has so many good stories. So many. Uh, you you gotta you gotta see him in person. If you guys don't know, uh, if you guys want to know more about Matt Awesome, you can catch him on all socials, uh, Twitter and Instagram, and even on TikTok. They're all under the same name, uh, Matt Awesome. This is the last episode of the year. You got to see the Christmas tree there, but you can catch us every single Monday, seven thirty all the way to eleven for Monday Night Raw and the Monday Night Trivia. Obviously, you already know um, Talking Smack. We're going to be bringing that on on, on the 10 o'clock hour. Uh, we still have Thursday nights with the Knuckleheads as well. Uh, Wednesdays, we're going to be rolling out a brand new show starting uh, January 11th, which will be uh, the, the, the slide. We don't really know. We, we don't have a, a, a quite a name for it yet. Here we go. Here goes Matt again. And back to our commercial. Back from commercial break. Steve is bothering you guys now too. Yeah, I don't know. I think he's everywhere. Fucking Steve, not Pena, but this Steve, the Steve that be messing up this kid. <laughs> so I, I was saying, uh, yeah. where can people catch you, like on on social media, if they want to know more about you? Um, you know, catch me on Instagram at Matt underscore Awesome Seventeen. You can also catch me on Twitter at Mister underscore Rated R Seventeen. Mm-hmm. You can catch me. Uh, <laughs> that's the main places you can catch me for now. Um, you can also catch me this coming December 30th in Ridgefield Park, New Jersey, for Fallout Shelter versus IFC Hellseekers. Mm. So I think we kind of like the name because me and Kuzo kind of like it. Okay. Your name are trios because it's me, Mr. Dave Rivera, and Big Cuzzo, Los Tres Golpes, mm. versus RTB. Now, RTB and me, we have wow. a lot of unfinished business. Okay. I faced you guys twice this year, and both times I came up a little too short in the match. Now, granted, I was putting a hurting on them. Not going to blame my team, but I'm kind of going to blame them a bit. The last time, it was all J.D. Alpha's fault. I'm guessing that's why he retired. Canceled himself. It's all good. Um, best wishes to whatever he does in the future. But he canceled <laughs> himself. Um, but we lost to them. That was the second time. Um, the first time, I got dropped on my neck by Mr. Uh, Joe Cruel um, with the German suplex. That ain't going to happen this time around, my man. I have a big Dominican machine behind me by the name of Big Cuzzo. Everybody's Cuzzo. And I have Mr. David Rivera. He's going to he gonna whoop some ass too. And on the 30th, Los Tres Golpes is going to exactly do that. Yeah, I got to You know what? I, I'm, I'm working. I'm working. I'm working my regular job that, that day. But I got to find a way to, to, to watch this. So hopefully they stream it online. If hopefully. they do, I could, I could definitely sit there and watch it while I'm at work. But it's man, an all-day of wrestling, too. So uh-huh. I would suggest that anybody watching this is free. Uh-huh. December 30th, come catch me. My last match of 2022 in Ridgefield Park. It's at 8. The doors open at 7. The show's at 8. But before our show is Invictus. Mm. And Invictus, they started their doors open at 2. Show's at 3. So okay. I would suggest if you want a whole day's worth of wrestling, come, come through. Early. If you want to go see Hellseekers only, Hit up Joe Kim Morales on Instagram mm. or hit out the Fallout Shelter, the Fallout okay. 101 um, for tickets to come to come to the show. Also, you have Steve Pena versus Flip Gordon. You also have um, Fight or Die. They're wrestling. Um, everybody's favorite wrestler, Cosmic. She's in a match against Mike Law and a few other gentlemen. Um, you have Federated versus um, Osito and, and Eden, Elijah Eden. Mm-hmm. Um, you have Anthony Gamble, Mr. Payton Foe versus Mr. Jorge Santi, the inner city king. 
can't forget that part of it. You might fight me for that if I don't say it right. But it's a whole lot going on that night. Um, hopefully, okay. I see people there. If you, if you guys saw me here on the call up, just let me know. Yo, I saw you on Kenny's podcast, and we'll take pictures, <laughs> and I'll tag Kenny in it and be like, yo, Kenny, this was for you. And then, again, like we were saying, goals for 2023. I already have one in the bag. I'm making my debut January 21st for yes. Battle Club Pro. I will be this in the building for that one. Something that I've been wanting, but I've been working for. Like I was mm-hmm. saying before I got cut off by Steve, Joe told me after the 30th, after my showcase of being Kevin Owens for a day, mm-hmm. he was like, I'm going to have a surprise for you. And I'll after after November, I'll talk to you about it. I'm like, all right. Okay. After the We Are Wrestling show, my, show, my, my showing there, which again, Kenny, thank you. You no bought bottles. You bought no, that was Toe. Toe brought them out the bottles. I brought the streamers. You got the streamers, and that was the key. <laughs> the key word to the Knuckleheads Network was, I need streamers. And you yep. guys came through, and I appreciate you guys no, so, no so doubt, much. Man. And so, Listen, so much. I, I always support that anybody. Who, I always support people who who, uh, who show that like, they really want to go after their dreams. You know what I mean? That's that's one of the things that uh that, no, that I'm appreciate really passionate you guys about. So much, guys. I appreciate you guys so much from the heart, man. I appreciate we'll be y'all. there on the 21st, man. Hey, listen, God willing, I'm God willing, we'll be there. Yet. I'm still huh? not sponsored yet. I'm not sponsored listen, yet. You you will, you I will by the end. Show. Trust me. Y'all you will by the Joe. end. We haven't got we haven't got we I gotta talk to Joe about that too, because we haven't um finalize everything because he's i think he's still like working on the card or whatever so yeah he's he'll he'll hit us up and, and stuff like but that but just, uh, just guys coming in strong for that match uh-huh. right uh, not only that like you said goals big or small mm-hmm. I, I always i never make a list of wrestlers i want to wrestle and that's right everybody does it my goal is where i want to wrestle at and where i want to be mm-hmm. by the end of 2023 by the end of 2023 of course i want to be alive well kicking good health and a little bit more wealth in my pocket, right? Right. But I want to be on dying. I want to be on dark or dark elevation. My tag partner Jared Diaz, one half of the Uptown Boys. He's been mm-hmm. on twice. Most recently with his uh his original uh, trios team, the Rapture. Okay. Um, and I want to be an extra in WWE for right now. Okay. Just to get my face out there. I know this coming year, I'm did I had a small little movie part. It's gonna be coming out next year. It's called the Boogie Movie. It'll be out 2023. So you guys will see okay. my face on the big screen. Nice. Um, hopefully more extra work, more mm-hmm. TV stuff to come along. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanna travel this coming mm-hmm. 2023. I wanna wrestle in in the South. I wanna wrestle Midwest. I wanna I don't wanna wrestle in LA. I I, I wanna venture out Texas. Right. In Canada, me, I want to get man. you're gonna you you're gonna get there, man. I can I can see it happening. We're gonna manifest this into the world. I was put into, was put into the just, universe, and it comes back. Exactly, but uh, but guys, uh, this is part one. We're gonna get a part two in there because, as you can see, there's there's all there's so much more that Matt has to say. There's so much more that I need that I have more questions for him that we need to get answered. Uh, but we're gonna catch this in 2023. Uh, for part two, uh, shout out to the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shout outs to the Knuckleheads Network, shout outs to the Running Podcast, uh, the Fake Cave, Dirty Heels, Circle Debate, uh, Job of Tears Podcast, uh, Battle Club Pro. Uh, if I'm missing anyone else, oh, Henny Wrestling. wrestling, yeah, we are Every, wrestling, we, we are wrestling, all of you guys, everybody who's been a part of uh, conversations with Kenny for the past. Uh, two years and even everybody who jumped in into uh, 2022. Uh, I just want to thank you guys so much for being a part of this. Uh, I don't really make any money off of this. This is more of a hobby for me. And I love just interacting with so many different people. And uh, let's let's strive for a better 2023 for uh, bigger and way better things for not only uh, conversations with Kenny, but for the Knuckleheads Network, because we work hard every single day. You know, we have a show every day except for Saturday and Sunday. I noticed that. You know what? In fact, on behalf of the Knuckleheads Network, on the behalf of Kenny, so all the gang, 
I want to say one thing that one of my good friends, Jay Garcia, always says. Love is free and support is free. You can do the both of them. And then for 2023, you can spread a lot of love and a lot of support to everybody. Because guess what? Everybody needs it. In this world, this world is crazy right now. We're in a crazy, we're in a crazy part of this world. And all we need is a little bit of love, a little bit of support, because we don't know mm-hmm. what people are going through on a daily basis. Yep. Just a little bit of a how you doing today? Hope all is well. You know, we just lost a, a gentleman by the name of Twitch. He was a dancer. Yep. We don't know why, depression or what. We don't know. But it always pays to hit somebody up and say, hey, are you okay today? How are you doing? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people going through that mentally, especially around the holidays. And it's always good to support a friend. Or even if you know somebody that has a business, like Kenny right now, he's doing this. I took out time from from my busy schedule to sit down with him. Because why? This man supports what I do. This man loves what I do. Thank you. He loves the business. Him, Toe, Gigi, Show, um, Lay, every one of the people that's a part of this network love the business, love pop culture, love anything that revolves around keeping people happy and showing love. And mm-hmm. they always show love to me. They show love to Battle Club all the time. They show love to We Are Wrestling at the last show. Like, support these guys. Support this network. And if you guys don't, I'll knock on your door and I'll beat you with a chakra. <laughs> yeah, and on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we are out of here. Happy New Year. Happy New Year's.